Bill Nye sat down with the Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau to have a conversation in front of some students and ultimately answer some questions. The opportunity for Bill to shine and give his renewable speech didn't come and things turned out a little different than he expected. Still, there's enough to be disappointed about, so here, let's go. First, let it be said that I don't like Trudeau. Although he's on my side of the political spectrum, but that's about it. Let's see what Bill was trying to do. We are going to be running the show, for better or for worse. We are responsible for the health of the ecosystems, which in turn uh, uh, control or uh, manage our health. And so that's where I look to you all to take this world view. And this is where I look, really, Mr. Prime Minister, to Canada. You have this unique situation where you have this extraordinary diversity and this extraordinary environment, and you have these extraordinary renewable resources. Okay, that was awkward. Let's continue. What is he up to? And pay special notice to Nye's last sentence. And so I'm very excited, very much appreciate you all inviting me because uh, I, uh, as a guy who grew up in the U.S., I looked at Canada as a world leader in, these, in this unique combination of uh, passion, uh, artistic thinking, respect for the environment, stewardship of the environment, and, uh, and uh, diversity. Uh, so let's take, uh, can we get another question? Thank you. If we don't get a question about this, I'm going to ask it. But let's see what happens. Yeah, well, Suffice to say that the student that got the final question of the day was someone who wanted Trudeau to talk about a Canadian healthcare issue, which is perfectly fine. Trudeau gave some inane speech about how giving birth was rather unsafe and how it became safer but that it might be interesting to incorporate traditions from those unsafe times back into modern safe practices again. I really didn't get it, but I guess I'm not progressive enough. Nye didn't get the question he wanted. He had been injecting the renewable word and care for the environment, so despite the time being up, he had to push and talk about his pet subject. Let's see how that went. Uh, so before we go, I know it's time to go, but I've, been under, I've gotten uh, a lot of messages from my colleagues in the environmental community. And I have been to Fort McMurray, Alberta. It really is an amazing place in the, in the most troubling way. But this pipeline, uh, Morgan Kinder. Kinder Morgan. Uh, Kinder Morgan. Uh, if you don't mind, mm -hmm. tell my colleagues in the States, uh, tell us about the Kinder Morgan pipeline. <laughs> and because everybody, if you got nothing else to do before you're done, check out the solutionsproject.org. And there we go. The Solutions Project has landed in Canada. The, so are you familiar with the Solutions Project? These are en civil engineers mostly, mostly at Stanford University, right, right near San Francisco. Done an analysis that you could power all of Canada renewably right now if you just decided to do it. There's, in the prairie provinces, there's so much wind. Even here on a day like this, there's so much solar energy that if you could capture it and solve the storage and transmission problems, you could run the whole place. The question here, aside from what Nye is going to tell the audience about the tar sands, is why should Canada go 100% renewable? They already have the pinnacle of decarbonization. Ontario, Canada's most heavily populated province with 13.6 million people, mainly concentrated in and around Toronto, has been decarbonized for ages. Less than 5% of their electricity comes from gas. More importantly, almost 80% comes from nuclear. During the entire conversation, nuclear was not mentioned once. Trudeau talked about the necessity of some pipeline that would transport Canadian oil to the US. 
Nine tried to talk about winds in the prairie and solar power that needed to be stored, for which students in the audience were kowtowed into coming with solutions, but never once was nuclear energy mentioned. Not as a valuable technology to pursue or to engage in, no. Nye decided to ask for hydrogen turbines for airplanes and push his renewable agenda, as he has done before countless of times. Let's forget about the fantastic claims Jacobson made in his paper in which he tried to convince the people that the US could be decarbonized by adding no hydro, but modeling a 15 times increase. But also, let's not forget that Canada is one of the leading countries when nuclear innovation is concerned. Not only have they successfully designed their own brand of reactors, the Canada Deuterium Uranium Pressurized Heavy Water Reactor, for instance, they also have the leading molten salt reactor designer on the planet, terrestrial energy. For Nye and Trudeau to pass on the opportunity to proclaim Ontario's success and the success of Canadian nuclear innovators is frustrating, to say the least. But I guess it will take some time for these people to change, if at all. Before I end this video, here are a couple of things I'd like to mention. First, I finished drafting Climate Zero Hour. I'm now working with a couple of expert friends to tie up some loose ends and edit the book. Second, I will be in Boston on March 26th and 27th to attend a symposium about nuclear energy organized by Energy for Humanity and MIT. I'm still unsure about the nature of the visit. I hope I get the chance to contribute. But so far I haven't heard from them other than that I have been invited and that the plane tickets and hotel room have been arranged. Finally, writing the book has cut into my activity on YouTube. I promise that this will be over soon. I've planned a couple more videos in which I am going to show you how to convert an apples to oranges to a apples to apples comparison. I'm pretty sure you're going to like it. Please leave a thumbs up if you liked the video and don't forget to subscribe for more. Have a nice day. Bye.